Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another Days Gone Horde series video where I focus all my attention on one specific horde. And on this video, it is the infamous Chamult Mission Horde that gets my full attention. Right then, on to some information. This horde is 300 strong. They reside in the central area of the Highway 97 region. And this is the very first horde that you are forced to take on in the main Days Gone game, as it is a mission horde. Now, you might think it a tad unfair that the very first horde that's forced upon you is 300 strong, but you do have the luxury of being able to use Napalm Molotovs for the very first time. So it is a bit of a leveller, as these bad boys are very effective. Now, here is where all the action takes place. It is a small town called Chumult, and that is your battle area right there. You don't have any options uh, as to a day or night time attack. You have to take them out at night because that is what the mission forces upon you. And lastly, you might think there's only going to be one or two easy kill areas for this horde. Well, there is no less than eight, so let's do this. Right then folks, on to the first run, and as always I like to start with what I call a conventional method, albeit one with a twist whenever possible, and this one is no exception. Now the action for all of these runs takes place in the town of Chamult, and that's where it is on the map. But before I get started with uh, taking out the horde, I need to get one thing in place first. And it's basically the bike, because as I've stressed in a lot of other videos, the bike is fast becoming one of the best weapons you have available to you. And I'm going to use it to really slow down the horde in a big way. In fact, where that bike is located, you will be surprised at what a good job it does in slowing this horde down. But, before I start, I'm looking to see if there's any stragglers. With the exception of that one that is actually heading down towards the horde, it's looking good. So there is a very specific spot that I'm looking to get to. It's right here. You get a fantastic view of the horde from here. And uh, I'm just making a point of crouching down so they will see me and they're obviously going to be attracted by the noise of the, the weapon. But they won't come ridiculously quickly. Not to start with. <laughs> Eventually their numbers will come at a big rate. But until they do, I'm going to take full advantage of this. Here they come, I'm going to get an attractor down there straight away. One or two may get past that bike, but in general, look at how they congregate there. And uh, they're going to get hit hard with frag grenades here. Especially as the grenades have no effect at all on the bike. I'm pretty much assuming by now that that bike is made of adamantium. But uh, <laughs> Anyways, yep, they're coming in big numbers here, so I'm hitting them with more frag grenades. Nope. I won't be able to stay in this position forever. They will eventually get to me. But trust me, by the time they do, their numbers will be significantly reduced. And I don't expect to have too much trouble when I move from this area. So, so far it's going well, and there we go. That's my cue to leave. Right, from here, I'm looking ahead this way. Taking full advantage of some of these uh, collapsible bridges. As always, I'm looking to take advantage of any height advantages that I can get. Whenever you climb onto areas, the horde are never as quick as what you are. So basically, height gives you time. And again, another nice area there, just using the bridge just to get a little bit more in the way of kills. And from here, there really isn't too many more of them left. So I'm going with another attractor. Just get up here. Not only will this give me a nice breather, but I'm going to go with my last frag grenade. Yeah, believe it or not, for this run, I am not bothering with Napalm Molotovs whatsoever. I will use them in some of my other runs, but not this one. Not required. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> that is it. Job done. Okay. On to the next method. Okay, on to run number two, and this is what I like to call the explosives run, for very obvious reasons. 
Anybody who is familiar with the town of Chamalt knows that this area is absolutely packed with explodable barrels, tankers and canisters. And the bike is placed there for a very good reason, because that's where I'm looking to end this run. But I am going to uh, lead this horde on a merry dance and uh, take them out with a great number of explosives. So let's do this. And yeah, I'm going to have to move things on a little bit quicker because there is a stray freaker that is right behind me. But this is no bad thing because I'm wanting the full horde's attention here anyway. So that thing will be squealing away. No problem. Here we go. Start off. I like to hit that one there. That takes out the two barrels. I very quickly need to get over to this area. Okay, I'm looking to take out that tanker. Again, that'll slow them down nicely. And uh, if you are attempting to run this way, folks, just make sure that you have plenty of stamina cocktails to use. Because otherwise you will come undone. Depending on how you have uh, allocated your resources for Nero Injectors when playing the main Days Gone game will depend on how much stamina that Deacon has at this point. I tend to uh, prioritise with focus long before stamina. So I don't have quite as good a Deacon as what some people may have at this point in the game. But anyways, I'm looking to get a quick breather here. Be ready with an attractor because I'm going to use it on this tanker over here. It's the largest tanker that you get in this area. And if they're well congregated by it, it'll take out 50 of their numbers. So it is well worth using the tractor for. Now, after that, I'm looking to just get onto this uh, truck here. Very briefly, it's quite literally just to bunch up the horde again. Because uh, the better bunch they are when they get to uh, the explosions, the more kills you're gonna make, simple as. At this point, I don't really have much of an option there, uh, but I will still take out a few, especially with burning kills. Now, from here, I'm looking to take advantage of uh, one of these collapsible bridges. And again, it's a very handy way of getting a bit of a breather for Deacon as well. So at this point, there is still a lot of explodable areas around here. So I've really got a few options. But uh, I am going to take full advantage of this barrel right here. So there we go, and I'll take that one out with gunplay. So again, I can use this section just to get a little bit more of a breather. Although I am starting to run short on uh, stamina here. But there is another tanker right here. So, at this point, just going to take a quick look and see what I'm looking at in terms of the horde. And you know what? Going by what I've got left on the indicator at the top of the screen, I'm just going to go for it here. So, stamina cocktail required in order that I can just sprint right over here, quickly mount on the bike, then quickly get back off. Okay, I've taken a slap, but never mind. Go with the gunplay and holy shit, they got back. They took the bike out of the way rather quickly, but however, I've got a bottleneck here and I'm going to take full advantage of it. As well as that, the burning kills have done the final job. And there we go. With a limited use of gunplay, a job very well done indeed. On to the next one. Right then, folks, on to the first easy kill location. And of all the locations that I'm going to show in this video, this method is by far the most well-known. It has been covered over the past few years by a great number of YouTubers and uh, a special shout out has to actually go to the very first person that discovered this and that YouTuber's name is called Arya is Human. So Arya, thank you for this fantastic method. I myself like to add a little bit of a twist to this one because basically I know that once I get the entire horde's attention over to this area, they are going to congregate in a big way inside the cabin. So it only makes sense to pack that cabin with a few explosives. <laughs> so I already have a petrol can in there. I'm going to get one of these uh, gas canisters in there as well. And there is another two that I have uh, available to me. I'm only going to pick one more because uh, I do have one or two other 
things to put in there, basically in the way of uh, remote bombs. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Deacon Stamina is uh, not fantastic at the moment, but that is because I always prioritise focus over stamina. Now, in order to set all this lot off in one go, I am going to take the time to place four remote bombs. The four, basically, that I picked up before heading down here. Okay, fantastic. Now that uh, the stage is set, let's do this. Uh, this is how it's going to play out, folks. I'm basically heading over to this area. I'm going to get the Horde's attention, and I'm going to do it with gunplay, because why not? They're so well congregated here, I might as well take the time to take out a few of their numbers. I'm not bothered exactly how many I get there. It's just to make sure that I have them all heading over to this area. Now, first part uh, of this uh, in earnest is getting down an attractor right there. That just gives you an extra bit of time to get this section done here. And it's all about approaching that at a very straight angle indeed. And once you're basically up there, it's all good. So I'm going to take the time now to just fire off a few grenades over there because they're congregating so well. Uh, I'll just take down some of the numbers very quickly indeed. And you know what? What the hell? They buy Molotovs, might as well use them. Yep, very nice. Now, as you can see, I've already got the numbers heavily reduced. Now, this is what's left in the cabin. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> as you can see, though, I am almost down to... Yeah, six. you're lucky if there is now 10 freakers left to take out. When I get to the stage, yeah, I was going to actually come off uh, this particular cabin and take out the last of them, but there were so few, that is it. A very good job done indeed. Now then, <laughs> before I actually show the easy kill location number two, I've got to show the crazy ass bike setup for this because it involves jumping onto a house. Now, this is the line that you need to be taking and right beside that tree there you just need to be to the right of it. Now, in order to show that this wasn't a fluke, I'm going to head back up there and, and go into a little bit more detail about exactly how this is done. Because there are one or two very specific things that you have to do in order to get this right. The engine that I've got for this particular bike is uh, the best one that you'll get and any nitros will suffice as long as you have nitros but you basically want to be set up here from here just get up to full speed when you get to that tree there just to the right of it and you want to be just basically tapping the nitros and as soon as you're actually in the mid jump you want to be holding down the L2 and the circle button. That is basically your brake and your drift button. That is the only way that you will be guaranteed that you can stop that bike quick enough. If you just try it with the normal brake alone, which is L2, you'll come straight off the um, roof, basically. So, for a final time again, just get myself lined up here. That's the ideal spot to start from. Through here, just to the right of that tree, and then there we go. I'm on hard with the brake and the handbrake. There we go. You'll do it every time if you do it like that. Job done? Okay. On to the actual run. Right then. Now that you've seen how it's done, <laughs> here we go. I'm actually showing this particular run right from the very start. I do show one or two of these because in some of the runs, it's essential to see it right from the very start. This one, not so much, but... The route that I take in order to get to the area that I need to be at is important. So you need to be seeing this from the very first time that uh, Kuri lets me loose. So it's up here following this path. Then around here, that's the spot where I started from before. Now, <laughs> at this point I'm going way too freaking fast. I didn't have the line right. I was never going to bloody stop the uh, bike on uh, that particular attempt. But no problem, just head back up here. Um, I showed before exactly how it should be done. And this time I actually take the time to do it the way that I should. 
instead of trying to be a cocky sod and do it first time. So here we go, just the right that tree. And there we go, very nice. So from here, you can basically go where you like on this uh, roof section because it doesn't matter. The horde will simply not get to you. Uh, I like to choose this area here. It's a very handy spot. Uh, you'll see exactly why when they finally appear. But uh, the fact that uh, I've managed to get to this spot so quickly is why I'm not seeing uh, much in the way of the numbers yet. But that will soon change. <laughs> Getting their attention from this roof section is not a problem. Jesus. And here we go. This is the ideal spot in uh, my opinion. You're going to get them congregated very nicely below you. And we'll make for a very easy job indeed. The hardest part of this by far is obviously making the jump onto this roof with a bike. But once you're here, and once you start coming in numbers, it's all good. And, uh, yep, again, I'm going to take the time to use some new pan molotovs. This is the first chance that you get to use them in the entire game, so why not? And because they are congregated so fantastically below you, uh, yeah, it makes for a very nice quick kill indeed. Yeah, just gonna keep hitting them. <laughs> there we go, as you can see folks, I'm already down to what I've can't be much more than 30 of them now, I would say. Hey! <laughs> yeah, there's some good gymnastics displays by the Frickers uh, here, like, but uh, their time is just about up. There's not very many of them left, and this will not take long to complete. In fact, that one might be the last. Please just tell me that's all of them. And it most certainly is. I can't believe it. You did it. You wiped out an entire horde. Job done. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Yep, no problem indeed. Right then folks, on to easy kill location number three, and this is one of the few easy kill locations that you do require to get down to quite quickly. So, as soon as you're let loose by Kuri, this is where you need to go. And this works very well because the horde is still en route to go into where they normally reside. As long as you basically make sure to get to this location quite quickly, you'll have no problems in attracting them over to this area. And yep, you guessed it, it is another rock climbing exercise with a bike. But this is an exceptionally easy one, folks. So basically want to get to there, and from here, very quickly, get an attractor into the mix. And pretty much as far as I can get it. So, just a waiting game here. Yep, there we go, I've got some of our some of the horde's attention, so I'll get busy with the gunfire and a little bit more noise which will uh, attract some of them. I certainly won't get the entire horde straight away but that is no bad thing and because of that I'm basically going to look to use gunplay at the start to reduce their numbers because at the moment it's safe to do so. They simply don't have the numbers where they can climb up to this uh, height. However, when I get the rest of the horde, then yes, it can become a tad problematic. But of course, I've got the luxury of Napalm Molotovs, and they are going to congregate so nicely here uh, that uh, I'm going to take the numbers out very quickly. And here we go. Now the rest of the horde is en route. So, that's what I've been saving these bad boys for. Let's use them. Just 
just a case of waiting every time. As soon as the first one starts job, hit them again. And when they're congregated like this, you will take out between 50 to 70 freakers every time. And as you can see, look at what this is doing to the horde. It's decimating them. The last one there was most certainly overkill, but I don't care. <laughs> Luxury of survival vision, so might as well use it. And there we go. That is it, job done. You did it. You wiped out an entire horde. And it's a nice easy job to get off the rocks uh, as well, so okay, on to the next method. Right then, on to easy kill location number four, and similar to easy kill location number three, you do require to be a little bit on the speedy side in order to get to the location before you are discovered by the Freakers. Um, but the good news is you do have a little bit more time than what you did with uh, the previous uh, location. Now, this location is another rock area that you have to climb. And it's a much more precarious one than uh, the previous run, that's for sure. But you do have a little bit of extra height on this one. So it's basically over here. And yep, you guessed it, it is this one right here. Now, the line is very important. Watch the way I do this. This one is actually quite tricky. And you want to have the bike ideally on the right-hand side up there as you're uh, climbing. Because once you're there, that's it, it's all good. But you do have to control this horde once they start getting to this position. Because they do have the ability, because of the numbers, that they can do the World War Z thing. And if you aren't careful, you will take one or two slaps. And uh, truth be told, you take one slap here anyways, you're likely to be coming off this rock face and then you're in trouble. So... The good news is, of course, yeah, they're congregated so well, you'll hear me saying that rather a lot, but uh, it just makes for a very fast kill of this one. So now, at this point, while I'm waiting for uh, the napalm uh, to take effect, I'm going to do my utmost to ensure that uh, any of them that are getting near the top of this pile don't manage to get to my position. You do have to get burnt a bit by the napalm, so be it, but uh, it's not going to do huge damage to you. And now this is starting to be a much easier as well. You can see by the bar there, I've got most of the numbers, so this is just about a done deal. You know what? What the hell? <laughs> Again, overkill, but uh, for the sake of this video, why not? And that may do it. Yep. No. <laughs> there we go. That's definitely it. Yeah, I should always wait for uh, the prompt there that says return to Captain Curry. Okay. Very nice. Right now, folks, on to easy kill location five. And again, this is another one where you really have to motor right from the start. But you do have a bit of time on your side here because this particular location is going to be very close to where this horde ends up going to. So this is the quickest way in order to get to the spot that I'm going to. Use the pathway here. I will stop the bike very briefly here just to show exactly where I am. That's the horde right over there. Uh, so at this point, yeah, I do have a bit of time on my side because the setup for this is quite an easy one as well. I simply want to get over to this area here and I've even got the time to use uh, the four remote bombs that I picked up from uh, Captain Curry. So I'm going to place a couple there and I'm actually going to place 
a couple on this side as well. This might seem a little bit strange because once the horde starts coming over to my position, you tend to get more on the other side, but I'm looking to control the other side where I'm going to get far more freakers uh, by use of Napalm Molotovs. Okay, now that I'm in position, I'm just going to let loose with uh, the RPD. And as always, they won't come over to this area particularly quickly. So, a little bit more noise, that'll certainly get their attention. Yeah, this is the start of it, so let's see what we've got in the way of numbers here. Yeah, quite manageable at the moment, but it is worth knowing once you do start to get them coming over in larger numbers, you need to start thinking about uh, crowd control. Yeah, this is what I mentioned about before. They tend to congregate more on that side, but because they congregate in such large numbers, I'm not bothered about the remote bombs. I'd rather save the remote bombs that are attached on the other side for the odd ones that are there. As you can see, nowhere near the numbers, so that's why I'm keeping the remote bombs for those and uh, just use them now, but uh, this side here is very problematic if you let them get the height. And trust me, I've done a few runs uh, using it this way and I've had one or two of the creatures that I've managed to get up to my position, so it's just making sure that that doesn't happen. And now I've got virtually all the numbers, that is pretty much a job well done. Okay, that pipe bomb wasn't very well placed at all. <laughs> but no problem, this job is just about done. I think there's only about two left. In fact, just that one right there. And there we go, there's the prompt, return to Captain Curry. That is the horde done and dusted. Yep, very nice one indeed. Okay, on to the next method. I've got more Molotovs. Ammo. Right then folks, on to easy kill location number six. And this is another one of these runs where basically speed at the very beginning is very important. Now, it's not important for this entire run, but um, there is very good reason why I'm looking to get over to this location quickly. Because the horde is already en route to their um, final destination where they're going to reside and uh, where I want to place um, these remote bombs, the four remote bombs that I've just picked up is uh, highly dependent upon getting uh, over this way long before the horde do. Now first of all I'm going to park the bike like that, believe it or not that is going to do a nice job of slowing down some of the freakers. But this is the, the main aim here. I see you. The first remote bomb I want right there. So that it gets the horde's attention. And then from here, the next one's almost like leading them over to where I want them. Because eventually when they get to here, that is uh, that will be it. They will be coming in large numbers. But from here, I can't stress this enough now. Now it's a bit of relaxation time because uh, time is on your side. I now actually have to wait until the rest of this horde actually get over um, well past the horseshoe cafe that you can see over there. Because if I started my attack now, the biggest problem that I would face, it's not only the, the amount of freakers that would be coming towards me from the front of the carriage that I'm going to be uh, on, but the back of the carriage is also vulnerable. You would get uh, some attacks from behind and uh, yeah, you're going to have enough to contend with when uh, trying to take out the horde this way. Uh, it's also worth knowing that this particular spot, um, it's very, very rarely indeed that you'll manage to get the job done without one or two freakers at least getting to your position. So do be aware of that. <laughs> now, so far it's looking quite good. I can't see any more of them, so... I think we're safe now to finally do this. So basically this is the area 
and uh, for the reason that I mentioned before that you can possibly get one or two of the freakers getting to your position here try not to be too close to the edge because if one does get up there and manages to give you a slap if there's a lot of freakers below yeah you guessed it they'll fire you down and you will be dead so at this point I'm looking to get the entire horde's attention now they won't come in large numbers at first but they will eventually all get over and the reason why I do this is a very simple one it's just a time saver because potentially you can take out the entire horde without using uh, those remote bombs in order to entice them but I assure you your run will all of a sudden take between 20 to 25 minutes so I've just put a tractor out there and I probably shouldn't have because there isn't actually that many in the way of numbers so I'm just going to go with a pipe bomb and would you fucking Adam and Eve it <laughs> they all moved away just as uh, the pipe bomb was uh, about to go off so I'm lucky if I killed about 5 or 6 there as opposed to the potential 20 but uh, yeah now I am starting to get a few more so napalm why not I've got 6 of them to use and uh, they're most definitely going to get used with this lot here because once they start coming in the heavy numbers you want to reduce them as quickly as possible now I'm just letting off those last two remote bombs that I had might take up one or two uh, more freakers but now yeah here we go and crowd control is the biggest issue now that you're going to face when uh, taking them all away so there we go case in point right Jesus Christ. <laughs> yep, they are doing their darndest to get to my position. So I'm looking now to start to do a bit of a sweeping motion every time, just going around in circles and uh, just trying to cover all the bases. And this does get easier as uh, the numbers reduce, so let's get with the Chicago chopper and this will uh, do a good number on them. Yeah. Finally, now I have some proper control. Oh, I fucking spoke too soon. <laughs> I said, this is the reason why you do not go too, too near the edge when you're trying to take them out like this. So now I'm just going to try and speed up the process and touch get another tractor. This will group them nicely. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Napalm Molotov. This will just about destroy all the numbers. Yeah, it's got to be said, of all the easy kill locations, this is probably one that I wouldn't imagine too many people would want to actually uh, do because there is risks. But at the same time, it's really not too bad. If your crowd control is good, yeah, you won't have that many issues. And generally, at this stage of the game, you normally have pretty decent weapons. I've got the Chicago Chopper, I've also got an RPD, and I've got an SMP9. So, all pretty fast firing weapons and do good damage. So. And yeah. And that is it. Job done. <laughs> yeah, and what a fantastic sight. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I've got more Molotovs, ammo in my saddlebags. Good, good. Uh, shit's gonna come in handy. Now, honestly. I don't expect anyone to try and go through the hassle that you have to for this particular one. But in the interest of showing every easy kill location, I am going to show this one. And it basically centers around the Horseshoe Cafe. Now, I'm simply taking this route to get over here because, again, it's a speed sensitive uh, time at this point because the entire horde is heading over by this cafe. So. I'm looking to get some remotes in place just to speed things along a touch when uh, I do eventually go into uh, this cafe because the horde will completely surround this building once you do. So I'm actually going to leave that remote one for the very front. The front of the building you can actually place items fairly safely but around the other sides there is usually freakers hanging about so that is why I want to make sure to get over to uh, uh, that area as quickly as possible. But now, 
yes, I've got a bit more time on my hands because now I'm just looking for the rest of the horde to make their way over to uh, their normal area. So, what I can also do at this point is because there is a number of items over here that can potentially be exploded, uh, basically one um, petrol can and you've also got three canisters. I'm going to take the time to basically um, get them over to the house as well. But first of all, I'm going to have to take care of this one. There's always one straggler that is over in this area. He's usually either at that point or he's uh, a little bit more further over. But uh, yeah, I'll just start with the canisters. Like I say, there's three in total. So if I place them close enough to uh, the um, remote bombs that I've got there, then hopefully they'll uh, go up in the explosions. And uh, in order to make this a little bit quicker for the video, I'm actually going to speed up this section, so this won't take long. Okay, that is me. Job done. But it will be once I actually get rid of the petrol can. Okay, so I've got a few items there at the front. I'll hopefully create uh, a few explosions and get a few extra kills. But before I start to get them over here, um, I'm going to do something that I recommend everybody does. Do yourself a bloody favour. Use some napalm molotovs and try and take out a good deal of their numbers straight away here. You'll be saving yourself a lot of time because once you get over to this cafe and you're inside the building there is ways to get out of it and you can get onto a roof section but it is very tedious indeed in the method that you actually have to do in order to take out this horde the only good thing i can say about this method is it's very safe so i'm looking to get them all over here and then it's getting inside the building using that and now I'm just going to go for it with uh, a little bit of gunplay and set off these remote bombs because they're basically starting to circle the entire building right now. Now, the areas that you can kill the Freakers from are, you can certainly take out a few from here, but again, it will take quite a while. But there is also an upstairs uh, section that you can actually use to access one one of the roof points but it is only the front roof section of the house um, the freakers that are around the rest of the house there's not actually much you can do about them unless uh, we'll stress this unless you have a lot of remote bombs if you're looking to take out this horde a little bit quicker um, using this method do make sure that you're well stocked up with remote bombs before heading here but, uh, or at least be set up with uh, enough items that you can craft a great deal. You can only carry six in total, but obviously if you have to craft the materials, yeah, you can make more. And yeah, there's a few there, so... <laughs> I say a few, there's about as many as you're ever likely to get. Um, I really can't stress this enough, I am only showing this so that people do have another option. Um, the first time I've ever tried this is when making this video because I have no intentions of ever using this method again. But again, it's for the sake of other people just to show another option. But here's the next problem that you face because a lot of people are thinking, no problem, start putting out a few tractors and uh, just taking them out. Look at this. They are not fucking interested in the attractors. So that is another thing that makes this horde incredibly um, tedious um, in terms of the time factor in order to take them out. You've quite literally got to be picking them off with uh, gunplay and slowly. Now, I am going to do everybody a favour by not showing this entire thing because it, it really is just rinse and repeat in terms of what you're doing. You're just moving around here, trying to get to spots where you can... Uh, pick off your because when they appear and even then sometimes you're hampered by uh, 
of things here. This is the biggest problem here. That sign uh, basically stops you from uh, being able to lean round the corner and get some nice easy shots off. So you are pretty much limited to this section. Now, as you start getting the numbers down, they will constantly start coming around. Um, but the numbers do start to get fewer and fewer. Um, basically, I'm not going to be doing this for much longer. Uh, or, sorry, I'm not going to be showing this for much longer. I'm actually going to skip the video on to when I have the horde down to a very uh, reasonable size indeed. And I'll show you how I basically finish this lot off. Um, because this does take a while. But uh, anyways, on to the next section. Right, at this point, <laughs> this is what I'm looking at. That is all I've got left. Now, the beauty of this is, because I am going to come off uh, this area, I have no intentions of staying on for uh, taking out the rest of them, because it, it will still take a while. Um, because there are so few freakers around the front section now, and that's the ammo that I've got left. I'm basically just going to make a bolt for it here. And I shouldn't get anybody coming after me. Or any of these bloody freakers. What's getting ready with the attractor just in case I do get company? But, no. So, at this point now, they're still all congregated around the side of the cafe. So I'm going to take the time to take them out uh, Nice and easily. Like I say, if that sign wasn't there, this would have been a far easier job, or at least one side of the house would have been. If I can take any pluses for anybody looking to try this, it would be this. You are completely safe when you're taking on the horde this way once you're inside the building. And there are quite a number of items that you can collect that are in the building as well. Um, but that's it. <laughs> that's the only good things I can say about this. I'm so glad this one is just about at an end. But the other problem I have now got, and everyone will face this, you will have to come off the uh, the building, or come out of the building in order to get the, the job done with uh, this sword when doing it like this, is that one or two of them are scattered about. It's mainly over here. That one I took up before might have just been a straggler. Now, not always, but what you usually do find is... No, I was about to say there's usually one over in the carriage over at the far side, but... Uh, no. Thankfully, that is that. Done and dusted. Choose it if you wish, but certainly not one I'd use. Right then, after the long and monotonous method used in taking out the horde for the last easy kill location, this one is like a breath of fresh air. Because this one is incredibly quick in order to get the job done. It is very easy to set up. And uh, it is a little bit full on when you actually see how the horde approach you at this particular location but by having one or two things in place you can make this job a whole lot easier and I'll show you how. Now here's where I'm going to uh, basically start this attack and yep you guessed it it's this rock and it is climbable. I basically want the bike on the back right hand side of that rock area and basically it serves as a very nice backboard. You can sometimes get one or two of the freakers getting up to that position through the World War Z style tactics, but with that bike being where it is, it will ensure that you don't come off the rock face. So, very handy to have indeed. Now, getting them over to this position is surprisingly easy. Um, there is a barrel over there, and I'm going to take full advantage of that. But, before I uh, take that barrel out, I might as well be clever about it and make sure I have an attractor right next to it. So when I do um, basically take out the barrel, I'll take out 20 freakers guaranteed. And once that barrel goes off, I am going to get the entire horde's full attention. 
So this is where you can make life easier on yourself. Get a second attractor up because otherwise you will get overwhelmed at the very start when trying to take them out like this because they come over crazy quick. Look at this, you can see them already. They are absolutely gunning for this position. So a couple of napalms there just to uh, try and get these numbers done quickly. And then I'm going with some gun play. And get that napalm just put that its job there so I'm not wasting any time. Just uh, getting that napalm fired right in there. And because they are all sitting below you like that, the napalms have maximum effect. And very nice. Already now I am in a fantastic position here. I have a large uh, amount of the numbers already taken out. So, yep, I'm hitting them again with the napalms. I don't think this one will actually take care of all of them. But there won't be that many left after this. And this right here, folks, that's overkill. But I don't give a shit. <laughs> after showing the last easy kill location, I just want this one done. And there we go. How good is that? Definitely one of my favourites. Very quick to set up. Very quick to do. And very, very effective. Right then. As always, I always like to include a stealth option in these Horde series videos. And for this Horde, I think a lot of people will be interested to see a good stealth option. And... Uh, this is one that's been shown many times before by other YouTubers and for good reason because it is the prime location um, basically in order to take this lot out with stealth. So this might seem a little bit strange but that is a little bit of an insurance policy. If I feel any of the freakers are getting too close to my location I will set off that remote bomb and that will move them over. Um, to the sound of that but this is basically where I'm going to start the entire attack from and I shouldn't need to move from this spot throughout uh, this so let's get the party started start with an attractor I don't have the luxury of um, attractor bombs at this stage but that's no problem I'm fully loaded with grenades I've got pipe bombs and of course I've got napalm molotovs so I'm going to start with a tried and tested method Basically throwing in the grenades, every time the grenade goes off, the horde reacts to it. Although at this point now, they actually look like they're starting to show a lot less interest. So, okay, let's get another attractor into the mix here. Yeah, they are actually close enough now, so let's go for it with uh, the nap napalm molotovs. Okay, yeah, another attractor is going to be warranted. I do want that one a little bit further away just to try and uh, take them uh, a little bit further away from my current position. And uh, always worth doing because uh, you can fire the grenades an awful lot further than you can fire a napalm molotov. So, yeah, I'm just going to use up the last of my grenades. And I'll just go with some pipe bombs as well, why not? You have all these um, throwable uh, weapons. You might as well use them on the largest hordes. And you're not going to get much bigger than uh, the Chimult Mission Horde, that's for sure. It's the second, well, the joint second largest horde in the entire game, with being 300 strong. But I'm getting there now. I don't think I'm going to have to do too much more. In fact, this Napalm Molotov might just take them all out because there didn't seem to be that many left there. And there we go, job done. A damn sight more enjoyable than easy kill location number seven, that's for sure, folks. <laughs> okay, on to the last run. Right then, folks, for the last run, I like to have a little bit of fun, and this is simply what I like to call a quick method. I purposefully do not call it a quick and easy method because there is an awful lot that can go wrong when trying to take out the horde like this but let's fucking do this right here we go i'm gonna start off i want to take out any of the freakers that are at the top section this just basically will ensure that i can get out the two attractors that i want and get the napalm molotovs out safely because i want three of them in play two over there because that's where the majority of them are coming from yep very nice i've got the three in there from here down to this section bottlenecks very nicely there so it's a fantastic area to get that fourth 
Nipan Molotov out. Now, from here, open spaces. I like to go with the proximity bombs, and we are going to fucking get it. <laughs> now, I'm heading them over this way, uh, basically because I just want to turn them around. So I might as well hit that barrel. I probably won't get that many kills, but it doesn't matter. Again, I just want this open section here, and it's going to be another proximity bomb. But, yep, I'm going to need some more stamina. I'm heading over now to where these two barrels are. I'm going to take full advantage of them. Very nice. I'll take out a few more. And from here, the final part of this run, I'm looking to get over here. Another proximity bomb in play. This is another bottleneck area. And would you fucking Adam and Eva have actually taken some damage there? I was hoping to do this extremely clean. But this hold is just about done. Once I get that one down. And there we go. That is the Tumult Mission Horde well and truly taken care of. And that's the end of the video, folks. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Take care.